next act, Joe. Very interesting. Done. I must admit, Joe, that I'm very impressed with the outfit. Very that's, that's why I've dressed up like this, so that I don't actually have to do anything else. Um, Okay, um, I didn't learn the introduction, so uh, here we go. Um, so this is uh, known better these days as a parody poem, but uh, when it was written in 1911, uh, the green eye of the little god, yellow god, was written as a dramatic monologue. It was written by the actor and poet J. Milton Hayes for a fellow actor and music hall performer, Bransby Williams. In Hayes's own words, it isn't poetry and it does not pretend to be, but it does what it sets out to do. It appeals to the imagination from the start. A piano accompaniment was also composed in 1911 by somebody called Cuthbert Clark. Cuthbert was a prolific composer of the time, creating work for ballet, theatrical reviews, as well as popular songs and dramatic monologues. So I'm going to uh, attempt to perform this this evening uh, with the original musical school, accompanied by Bonnie Warren. So thank you very much. Uh, I give you the tale of the green eye of the yellow god, sometimes known as Mad Karoo. There's a little green-eyed idol to the north of Kathmandu. There's a little marble cross below the town. There's a broken-hearted woman tends the grave of Mad Karoo, and the yellow god forever gazes down. He was known as Mad Karoo to the subs of Kathmandu. He was hotter than they felt inclined to tell. But for all his foolish pranks, he was worshipped in the ranks, and the colonel's daughter smiled on him as well. He had loved her all along, with the passion of the strong. The fact that she loved him was plain to all. She was nearly 21, and arrangements had begun to celebrate her birthday with a ball. He wrote to ask what present she would like from Mad Karoo, they met next day as he dismissed a squad. And jestingly, she told him that nothing else would do but the green eye of the little yellow god. On the night before the dance, Mad Karoo seemed in a trance. They chaffed him as they puffed at their cigars. But for once he didn't smile, and he sat alone a while, then went out into the night beneath the stars. He returns before the dawn, his shirt and tunic torn, a gash above his temple dripping red. He was patched up right away, and he slept through all the day, and the colonel's daughter sat beside his bed. He woke at last and asked if they would send his tunic through. She brought it and he thanked her with a nod. Then he asked her search the pocket, saying, that's from Mad Karoo. And she found the little green eye of the god. She upbraided poor Karoo in that way that women do. But both her eyes were strangely hot and wet. But she wouldn't touch that stone, and poor Karoo was left alone with the jewel that it chanced his life to get. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> there was a ball. There was a ball.
was a ball. When the ball was at its height on that hot and tropic night, she thought of him and hurried to his room. As she crossed the barrack square, she could hear the dreamy air of a waltz tune softly stealing through the gloom. His room was open wide with silver moonlight shining through. The floor was wet and slippery where she trod. An ugly knife lay buried in the heart of Pad Peru. Twas the vengeance of that little yellow god. There's a one-eyed yellow idol to the north of Kathmandu. There's a little marble cross below the town. There's a broken-hearted woman tends the grave of Mad Karoo, and that yellow god forever gazes down.